Welcome everyone. Here in Australia, it's getting well into winter, so I wanted to work on a cozy little project today. For the first time on my channel, I will be repainting a cave club doll. I love this line so much. I think their face and body sculpts are adorable, and the diversity in the skin tones of their dolls is one of the best out on the market today. This is a Furnessa doll. I adore her deep skin and her super cute little smile. I remove her hair off camera and start to take off her factory paint with some 100% pure acetone. I also remove her ears, which is a bit of a shame because I think that they're just so adorable, but she will be receiving a new pair of fawn ears to replace them. Once they're sliced off with an X-Acto knife, I use my Dremel tool to sand down the vinyl and smooth it out. For her face up, I decided to stick pretty closely to the sculpted shape of her eyes. I changed the shape a tiny bit, but mostly it's the same. The watercolour pencils I use are a combination of Caran d'Ache, Faber-Castell and Derwent. As I get more familiar with the different brands, I'm starting to understand the best way to use each of them. After sketching out her upper lash line and lower waterline, I start to add in her iris. I wanted to give her sparkling blue eyes to give her a chilly, wintry feel and contrast against the warmth of her skin. I fill in the whites of her eyes and then use a brown pencil to start shading the crease of her eye socket and her lower lash line. I then use chalk pastel dust to start blushing her face. I wanted to give her a super rosy complexion to make her look like she'd just come in from the freezing cold. I also use some browns and black to start shadowing around her eyes. Using a super sharp black Caran d'Ache watercolour pencil, I start sketching in her eyelashes. I wanted to give her cute spiky lashes to give her a cheerful look. I think that the angle of her lower lashes adds to her smile, like her cheeks are almost pushing the lashes up because she's smiling so much. To keep her eyes from looking too dark and heavy, I keep her iris a navy blue instead of taking it all the way to black. To start her eyebrows, I first lay down a layer of chalk pastels in the general shape. I can then sculpt out the final eyebrow silhouette with a kneaded eraser. I find this the easiest way to get the eyebrows as even as possible. I then lock that in with a spray of Mr. Super Clear sealant before going in to draw the individual hairs. I give her chunkier, more wild brows than I normally do, and I think they suit her really well. To add dimension to her eyes, I add blue and grey shadows to the top half. This really helps to stop the eyes looking too stark, and I love the effect it gives. I normally do this step much later in my face-ups, but this time I decided to add my little white highlights at this point. Not sure why, but I guess it's good to mix things up.
To bring some more lightness into the bottom half of the eye, I dot in some chalk pastels and then blend it in with a small brush. I also use pastels and a tiny brush to give her some small freckles. I blend them in with my fingertip to make them lovely and gentle. The final details I add with my watercolour pencils are some highlights with a light yellow and some contrasting details to the eyes, as well as mapping in the catch lights with white. Once I'm happy with all my pencil work, I finish the face off with acrylic paints. This starts off with adding more details and shines to the eye with a very light blue. I also go into the eyebrows and add more and darker individual hairs. I intensify all the highlights on her face with my white acrylic. This means of course the catch lights, but also the other high points of her face, like her nose and lips, and also a few sparkles across her waterline. I wanted to add some more freckles, so I splotch on some watercolour paint and dab off the excess with a paper towel. I decided to add some white eyelashes to her look. I haven't used this technique on dolls for about six or seven months, so I was nervous to try it again, but I love the effect it has on her. I think it helps balance the light and darkness on her face. A fawn wouldn't be a fawn without a cute set of horns, so I sculpt her a pair using Milliput. I have a little reference sketch nearby to make sure they turn out the shape I want, and this also helps me to create two matching horns of the same size. I wanted her horns to have a fuzzy texture, so I make my own flocking by trapping up tiny bits of black, brown and grey yarn. It was time consuming and made my hand cramp, but it was definitely worth it. I used Gorilla Glue to attach the horns, and then painted them along with her entire scalp, dark brown. I cover her horns with tacky glue and then coat it generously with the flocking. I then leave it for about 40 minutes for the glue to dry before brushing off the excess fluff. For her ears, I create a base out of felt fabric and then take the yarn I will use for her hair and crumple it up into a loose ball. I then take a needle felting needle with a foam mat and some finger protectors for safety and start needle felting. I'm definitely a beginner when it comes to this technique, so if it's something you're interested in, I really recommend searching it here on YouTube and checking out what the process is all about. With the brown exterior of the ear complete, I move on to the inside creating a pink and white ombre effect by mixing together three colours of yarn fluff. With the needle felting complete and the ears looking very adorable, 
I use fabric glue to attach the ears to the sides of her head. Before I start adding her hair, I quickly sketch in some guidelines. Mainly just where her part will be, and then some other guides to help me keep the hair even all the way around her head. I use my favourite fabric glue to start attaching my yarn wefts. Once all the wefts are glued on, I wrap some cling film over her part line and leave it overnight to help it lay nice and flat. To cut her hair, I use in combination a sharp pair of scissors and also an eyebrow razor. I wanted this hair to be wild and free so I definitely use the razor more often than the scissors. The biggest advice I can give on cutting bangs is go slowly. I spent a lot of time slowly trimming her fringe, but it was worth it because once you go too short, there's nothing you can do to fix it. You definitely need a lot of patience to give your doll bangs. To give this girl proper fawn legs, I will need to use my Dremel tool to modify them. I start by cutting her legs around the thickest part of her calf. I also trim away some of her foot so that I can sculpt her some hooves there instead. I cut off an extra section of her shin, but I seem to have lost that footage. But removing that section is what allows the legs to come back together at this angle. I use Gorilla Glue to reattach the legs. I love Gorilla Glue for leg mods because the glue expands as it dries, so it fills up all the extra space in the joint, making it sturdier and also making it easier to smooth out later on. I use Milliput to sculpt her some new hooves. I start just gradually adding it around her feet until I've built up the right amount and I can start shaping it. When working with Milliput, I like to sometimes leave it to cure for a while and then come back to do a bit more sculpting. Sculpting it when it's a bit more cured is helpful to refine the shape without risking the integrity of the whole shape. I give the hooves a sand and then paint them a dark warm grey. Using the same yarn as her hair and the same amazing fabric glue, I start attaching wefts to her legs. I find for legs specifically, it's easier to get a nice result gluing the brushed out yarn straight to the doll, rather than creating wefts first. It's a bit more challenging as far as keeping all the yarn clean and together and looking neat and in the right direction, but it's worth it for a final product that looks much more natural.
Once I finish covering her shin, I quickly pause to give it a very basic haircut. This is definitely not the final cut by any means, but it's just good to keep on top of these things. Having the shin at a more unified length will help give a frame of reference when we trim the thigh later on. I then continue to glue the hair all the way up the leg. While I was needle felting this doll her ears, I also made her a little tail. I love how cute the little white underside of a deer's tail is, so I definitely wanted to include this in my design. Again, I use a combination of scissors and an eyebrow razor to give her legs this haircut. Yeah, yeah. I think you can definitely give a doll's head a haircut without a razor tool, but if you're thinking about creating a doll with furry legs, this razor is a must. It is so helpful in creating an organic look in this large amount of fur. To finish up her body, I give her some pink blushing on the tops of her shoulders her elbows, her belly button, her collarbones, and her hands. To keep her nice and warm, I crocheted her this scarf. I thought that the single plain colour looked too stark, so I used some alcohol inks to add some variety. I drop grey, blue, and purple inks randomly over the length of the scarf. And then to blend the colours together, I also drop in some isopropyl alcohol, which acts as a medium to mix them together. And with that, she's all done. Please don't forget to like and share this video, and let me know what you think of her in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, your support means so much to me. I'll see you in the next video. Have an awesome day.